Okay, Organic Chemistry 2341. Here's Chapter 6, Section 3. We're going to continue with ionic reactions and talk about SN2 specifically. Okay, so when we are doing these substitution reactions, we are having bond breaking and bond making, and they can happen in a number of different ways. The first thing that happens in our reaction is we actually are going to be end up breaking the sigma bond between the carbon and the leaving group here. And it's going to form a new bond between the electrons of the nucleophile and that carbon substrate. And the original sigma bond electrons are going to leave with the leaving group. Okay, So what does that mean? How which happens first? Do we break one bond? Do we make another bond? Or do they all kind of form an all once? Well, let's look at our options. Okay, The first option we have is where we are making a bond and breaking a bond simultaneously. Okay, And so that would be we are starting to partially form a sigma bond while we're partially breaking a sigma bond. And then we end up with a new sigma bond and our leaving group here. The other thing that can happen is we can actually break the bond between our uh, carbon and our leaving group first, giving us some kind of charged species. The third theoretical option is that we actually make a bond first, okay? And that would have the nucleophile creating a bond. Now, the problem with this is if we do this, we're actually going to end up with five bonds to carbon, meaning we're going to have 10 electrons around the carbon, and therefore that's going to violate our octet rule. And that means that our number three option here, bond making occurs first, will not happen. So that leaves us two options, bond making and breaking occurring simultaneously, and then bond breaking first and making some kind of charged species. Okay, let's look at the first one. Okay, as the nucleophile is attracted to that partially positive carbon, because we have a polarized bond between the carbon and the leaving group, that nucleophile can come in and be attracted to it and then allow it for the substitution product to happen. When we do this at the same time in one step, we call this the SN2 reaction, because it's a substitution reaction involving a nucleophile but it's bimolecular, meaning the two molecules are involved in the translation step at the same time. Therefore, both the nucleophile and the substrate, the uh, carbon with the leaving group, participate in that rate determining step, forming that intermediate, I'm sorry, not intermediate, forming that transition state, and therefore the concentration of the nucleophile and the concentration of the substrate are important. That gives us a second order rate law reaction. Okay, so let's look at the energy diagram here. We have our reactants, we have our nucleophile, in this case hydroxide, coming in and reacting with methyl chloride, okay? So in our transition state, we have this very long oxygen-carbon bond as it's starting to form this new sigma bond, and then we have this elongated carbon-chlorine bond. So we're starting to break the carbon-chlorine bond. Okay, but again, this is a transition state. We do not have five bonds to carbon. We have three bonds to hydrogen and a half a bond to the hydroxide and a half a bond to the chlorine, giving us only four bonds. And then we move through that transition state to having our leaving group leave and having our neutral product created. And therefore, the energy uh, diagram uh, rolls downhill to give us our products. Okay, so. What this also means is because the nucleophile and the substrate are at, there at the same time, that the nucleophile always has to attack the side opposite the leaving group so that you can be forming a bond and breaking a bond at that same time. What that gives us is that the stereo center, if we have one in our substrate, is always inverted. If we started out with one stereo center, we completely invert it to give us the opposite stereo center. If you can imagine, it's like taking an umbrella in the wind and, and, and put, blowing it up and having your nucleophile and coming attack the inside of the umbrella, and then having that umbrella be blown and inverted all the way to the other side. So our nucleophile is now attached where the handle is, and our leaving group leaves where on the top of the umbrella. This will always happen in SN2 reactions, and it's really an interesting way to determine the mechanism of reaction to look for that inversion of center. Okay, and it's a lot of the times it's called a backside attack or an inversion attack because you have to have the nucleophile come in from the opposite side. 
So let's look at the transition states on this. Okay, if we look at just the uh, methyl bromide reacting with the uh, hydroxide here, our transition state has our nucleophile pushing three hydrogens to give us our three hydrogens in the plane to form our transition state. Okay, so that's very, uh, that's a little bit lower in energy it takes than if we're pushing uh, carbon groups out of the way. If we look at part B here on the left here, we now have our um, nucleophile coming in. It has to push two carbons into that planar configuration to get to that intermediate state, to that transition state. Because it takes more energy to get to that transition state, these typically react slower in the reaction because of that higher uh, energy in that transition state. Okay, so now we have our SN2 reactions where we have bimolecular, it happens all at one time, and all of our en energy um, diagrams have a single hop.